Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is our new uh, infrared slot sensor toggler kit. When you breach the infrared slot sensor seen here, the output toggles. There's a power on reset circuit that uh, enables that the output is always low until you make a first breach. When you breach the sensor once, it toggles high. The output toggles high. It requires 5 volts uh, and there's an output. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'll actually solder I'll solder a uh, set of wires to one, and I'll give you a demonstration. Then I'm going to show you how to put our kit together in case you're interested. Right now I've got it hooked up to 5 volts through the red wire, ground through the black wire, and our orange wire is our signal wire. That's plugged into a uh, 470 ohm resistor and an LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter, and I'm going to uh, breach the, let's put it the slot sensor. Now watch the LED on, off, on, off. Good for security circuits. Uh, it can be interfaced with Arduino very easily. Now I've got it hooked up to a 5 volt piezo buzzer. The output directly powers the buzzer as an alarm. Now again, there's a power and reset circuit, so so every time you power it on, it always ends up in low state. So there's no false triggering. So let's talk about the schematic. On the left hand side, we have our input. It's uh, three holes: ground, signal, and VCC. VCC is five volts. So feed five volts uh, here, ground here, and uh, there is a 10 microfarad capa smoothing capacitor on the input power line. Your Arduino should be able to power this off the five volt port. Your signal line, your output signal line, is connected to the output of a JK flip-flop. In this case, we use the LS109A, um, which is a dual JK flip-flop. We only use one. Now, you'll have to pardon the uh, package that I, that I put together, a really poor library for the uh, H21A1 slot sensor. What it is here is you've got your cathode of your IR LED, and it's all internal. So you've got your cathode, which is connected to ground. Your anode is connected to a five, uh, 470 ohm resistor connected to VCC. So that's powering, that's constantly powering the internal infrared LED on the slot sensor. Uh, at the uh, photo transistor end, or infrared transistor end, what happens is we've got a collector and an emitter. The emitter of that transistor is connected to ground, and the collector is connected to a 10K res protective resistor, which is also connected to VCC. So when the slot sensor is breached, the uh, transistor, uh, well, the, the transistor uh, pulls the voltage here down and then up and then the signal there goes to the input of the JK flip-flop, the clock pin. So every time that receives, a, uh, uh, every time that slot is breached, a single pulse will go to the flip-flop which will trigger a toggle. There's the power on reset right here. I've got a 100K resistor uh, in series with a 10 microfarad capacitor. So on power on, this resistor limits the current to the, to the capacitor. So think about in an hourglass. This capacitor, the voltage on this capacitor will rise through uh, the limitation of, the, of uh, current through this resistor. So uh, when you power it on, there's nothing on that capacitor, and it slowly fills up to 5 volts through this resistor, at which point the circuit becomes active. It's called the power and reset circuit, and it serves to uh, make sure that the output of the flip-flop always starts off in low state. Now, if we didn't have that there, we could turn it on, and might, uh, the output might be on. We don't want that. So, for those of you who don't know JK flip-flops, a JK flip-flop can be configured in many different ways, but if you want to set it to toggle, you have to set the clear input, the reset input, the J input, and the K input to high. Now in this case, the K input, which is connected to pin 2, is actually an active low input, so it's inverted. So if you're actually trying to, you can try to make this yourself pretty easy. Uh, there's not really any circuitry that's required for that chip. Specifically, you need a 5 volt source on pin 16, your ground on pin 8, which is common with TTL chips, and you've got pins uh, sorry, pins 2 and 5 connected to VCC. I meant K is connected to actually pin 3. Sorry about that, the K input. So, we only really use the bottom end of the chip. Pin 1 is our clear input, which we have set to our power on reset circuit. Pins 2 and 5 are connected to VCC, which is 5 volts. 
pin 3 is connected to ground, and our clock input, which is pin 4, is connected to the output of our, uh, of the cl or sorry, to the collector of our infrared, uh, our infrared slot sensor. So the output is tied, uh, again, way back here to where our power supply is. This is where you can interface it with a little security system, your Arduino, an LED. It's fun to build, very easy to build. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you how to build the kit. Here's what comes with the kit. You got your printed circuit board, your H21A1 infrared slot sensor, a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, two 10 microfarad capacitors, a 16-pin uh, so uh, IC socket, a 74LS109A microchip, and three resistors, 470 ohm, 10A, 10K, and 100K. It's a very easy kit to get put together, but I'm going to go through it so you can follow along with me if you make the purchase. You might not be able to see this from here, but the H2181 slot sensor has a slant on the upper si on the upper right hand side, uh, and that slant fit the side with the slant fits in with the what the the footprint with the white bar. So from a top uh, from a top view, you want to make sure that the side with the slant on it fits into this side of the slot sensor footprint. So what I'll do is I'll fit it in and I'll show you. The slanted side, the side with the E on the top, I'm not sure if you can see that from here, is to the left from this perspective. So soldering in place, you got four leads, it should only take you a second. Next we're going to place the socket in. If you look at the one side of the socket, there's a little notch in, in, in uh, the left hand side of it. On the printed, or circuit board, there is an indicator where the chip's supposed to be, where the, not the same notch is supposed to be matched. So make sure that you place from the top view the side of the socket on the printed circuit board with the side with the notch. There's also a notch on the microchip that indicates where which way, where you're supposed to pull it, place it in. So follow that when you place your uh, IC in the socket. As you can see, I've placed my chip with my notch to the left, fully facing the slot sensor. So now we've got two 10 microfarad capacitors. There's uh, footprints for both of them, C3 and C2. The there is a positive indicator on the right side for both of them. It's a little plus sign. Now that indicates the positive side because these are electrolytic, they have to place in a certain uh, manner. So the long lead on an electrolytic capacitor is the positive lead and the shorter lead is the negative lead. Make sure to place the positive leads on the side with the plus sign, so on, in this case on the right for both of them. Place them both, then we'll do the um, ceramic capacitor. The single ceramic capacitor, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, can be placed in either way. There is no polarity, and it can be placed in the little uh, footprint for C1. So place it in, solder into place, and then we're almost done. We've just got three resistors left. So now we've got our 470 ohm resistor, our 10k ohm resistor, and our 100k ohm resistor. R2 is 1k, or 10k rather. R1 is 470 ohms, and R3 is your 100k. So if you don't know how to read uh, capacitor or sorry, resistor color code, bring out your multimeter because if you place these capacitors in the wrong order, your circuit is not going to work. And there you have it folks, your very own infrared slot sensor toggler circuit. This video was taken on December 30th, 2011, so I hope you all have a happy new year. If you are interested in do-it-yourself kits, expect a bunch more videos because I've got 20 more kits in. I'm working on videos day by day trying to get the assembly videos and the instructional videos together. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. Visit EngineeringShock and ElectronicLessons.com today. Thanks for watching, everybody.